Okay, so let's take a look at creating some wood fractures. Okay, first of all, what we need to do is we need to create an object. So if we go over to create, create box, and I'll bring in the numeric panel, and we'll hit N. Um, now with regards to the actual object itself, it's up to you whether or not you want to create the actual exact sized uh, piece of timber, or whether you just want to use sort of a generic shape and then um, stretch that. In this case I'm just going to sort of use a, a generic sort of shape and um, and show you that uh, when you stretch it and stuff you get different results. So first up um, with the width I'm going to do point two twenty centimeters by one by twenty centimeters. Okay now it's extremely important this next step to give your object a bunch of um, segments. In this case, I'm going to do one in the Y, or two in the Y, sorry, two in the X, two in the Z, and a bunch in the Y. So, even though wood has long, thin shards, or long, thin pieces, um, you still want to give it segments so that it can calculate the fracturing. Okay, so we've got that. Next step is to texture your wood before you actually fracture it. Um, and we're going to do it uh, via a UV map. So just bring up the UV map. Okay. So we go over to texture, new. And for this, I use Atlas because I use tile tileable images so that, um, well, you'll see anyway. Choose Atlas and hit create. Okay, so what I did, let's hit F6, is I've already loaded in an image. This is my wood image and it's tileable. Um, made that in Photoshop. As you can see I've sort of blurred out the seams. So we hit F5, bring up the surface editor and we'll set the surface to UV and use this rough wood and there we have our wood now I use Atlas like I said a second ago because what you can do is if I hit H I can stretch this because I'm using a tileable image that I can get finer detail depending on how much I stretch it if I make it smaller I get more coarse detail if I stretch it out I get really fine detail so just keep it somewhere around there okay so that's that parts done now we have our piece of uh, wood that's textured and we can go ahead now and fracture it <coughs> so if we go over to multiply and down the bottom here you've got fracture we'll select that so you might be familiar with this fracture tool um, I'm sure everybody's tried it but what we normally do is we just leave it on this algorithm here which is Veroni, Veronio anyway I did some research to find out how to pronounce it and I really couldn't find any anyway what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on that and we're gonna choose halves and we're gonna make sure that the cutter is uh, fractal cube okay so the rest of this is self-explanatory we'll just select explode parts and now for the <coughs> for the magic now after doing a, a whole bunch of tests and testing um, this is what I found uh, I'm about to go go into change these values here to get wood now the piece count well, in this case, I'll just make it 20 pieces. Depending on how many pieces you want, depends on how much you select here. If you want it big, chunky uh, bits of wood, well, obviously you do less. If you want lots and lots of small little splinters and stuff, well, obviously you, you, you increase the, the count here. But it's these two parameters here that make all the difference. Maximum angle, what I found was that if we set that to 90, and the unevenness, we set that to 1. That's right. 20, 90, and 1. Okay, so now we'll hit OK. And there we have it. If I hit A, you can see now that we've got a whole bunch of pieces that are, that 
seem reasonably sharp okay but I'll show you something in a sec we'll just bring it back to the base so you can see how it's fractured it okay now if we look at the statistics polygon statistics zero polygons we've got one so we can select that and delete it so basically the fracture values that I used pretty much um, work every time um, without too many zero polygons in fact average is like two or three so there we have our piece of wood um, we save that out and we'll then bring that into a layout and I'll show you how to set up bullet dynamics to fracture it okay so here we are in layout and I've gone ahead and set the scene up I just um, used model tool geometry and used a cube to create um, a ground plane and you and with with bullet dynamics you do need rather than just a, a ground plane you do need a object so that there's some thickness in there otherwise things just go right through okay so first up what we need to do is we'll select our ground and I'll do it from there and under FX tools we'll make this a static body and for the wood we'll go over here and do parts so if I bring up the bullet menu we'll go ahead now and I'll show you how to set up the wood to get it to work correctly okay first of all with the cube object I'm going to change the shape to box just to make it simpler and for the wood okay so after lots and lots of testing first of all let's just turn off enable dynamics okay what I've found is that uh, for the wood to actually uh, fracture correctly and not dance around and stuff what we need to do is change the shape to convex pieces the annoying thing about convex pieces is that every time you load the scene or whatever it has to do the decompressing or recompressing or whatever and just it's annoying but anyway this works the best this sort of creates a rough sort of a shape of each of the uh, of each of the um, fractured bits as opposed to when it's on mesh it um, calculates the exact mesh and because there's so many different faces and sides and polygons and what have you it just doesn't work the best so convex pieces could it kind of rounds it off now the next um, thing we need to change is the collision margin I drop that down to three now what I found is that the collision margin um, playing with it stops or adjusting it stops all the pieces from dancing around and, and hooking onto each other and stuff so what I found is that uh, between two and five millimeters if you if you change between those you'll find that you'll get the result you want okay next step mass distribution we change that to surface um, and uh, instead of density I use given mass and 40 kilos that's a bit heavy for a piece of wood but whatever you can change this around to get different effects these are the main settings that you need with the with the fracturing the wood convex pieces uh, three millimeters or so collision margin surface and given mass you can play around with it as much as you like to get different results but this is what I found and pretty much leave the rest as it is unless of course you don't want them to break up so easily we can increase the glue strength and breaking angles and stuff like that but uh, generally speaking this will do the trick so what I'll do is, is I'll just raise this up and we'll get this to calculate um, so I think we're pretty much ready to go if I turn on enable dynamics here, here goes the decom decomposing or whatever, de whatever it's called anyway and if I go to the end of the timeline we'll see the simulation and there we have it I'll just change to the camera view and there we have our wood cracking breaking okay so there's with there we have our fractured wood with all the different pieces now this is more of a little stumpy piece of wood but this is what we can do is that we can go back to the start of the timeline bring up the bullet dynamics turn off enable dynamics and what I'll do is is I'll start playing around with this piece of wood we can stretch it 
in all different ways make it long make it look like a plank make it look like a um, a, a stud for a um, house frame or something like that uh, duplicate it once T move it across you can rotate it 180 so it looks a little bit different and what have you but now we've got a nice long plank from a short little stumpy uh, piece of wood so what we'll do now is we'll enable dynamics and I'll just zoom it out and go to the end of the timeline okay if we go to six hit six and go to the camera view now you'll notice we get a different result we get some nice thin pieces of wood nice spiky long sharp so you get different results by I guess manipulating um, the object in different ways um, what I want to show you is the next step and that is to basically once you've done your simulation you're happy with it depending on whatever it is that you do what we then do is we um, bake that out to an MDD so that we don't have to worry about the um, bullet calculations anymore so the way we do that go back to the four select our objects what we'll do is I'll select both of the objects and I'm gonna go to in out the in out tab and do MD multi baker and hit OK so now what we've done is we've baked out this animation to an MDD we can then go to bullet and we can disable that um, if you're gonna save your scene out and reload it and you don't disable enable dynamics you're gonna have to wait ages and ages for all the decomposing de whatever it's called um, and you could have a whole stack of uh, wood in here and it just takes ages and ages to find it's the wrong scene how do I know <laughs> anyway so we've disabled that and you'll notice now that nothing happens but what we can do what we can do now is go into the MDD multi loader and we can add the two MDDs hit open and match by whatever name and points so we've got our MDDs and if we hit OK now you'll notice that something funny happens and that is that we're not even close to the ground and everything looks all stretched and and um, looks all wrong what we need to do for our objects is we need to zero everything out or scale is one 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 position zero 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 and now you'll find that the animation works correctly this is in the front view okay so now we've got our timber or our wood fracturing and being run by an MDD as opposed to bullet bullets not even on so that's how you go ahead and fracture wood and set it up in bullet um, I'll show you a few other examples in in modeler of how you may use these pieces of wood to make different objects and um, and a few little tricks so I'll see you in modeler so here we are in modeler and what I want to show you is all the different um, types of um, wood that I created and fractured now I just want to point out it's extremely important to work with uh, real world scales as um, dynamics uh, bullet dynamics calculates its simulations based on real world um, uh, measurements and physics okay so what I've got here is I've got a well, it's not a really a pine stud it's like a hardwood stud but it's just a basic um, a, a, a piece of timber that's used to create uh, wood frames in, in houses here in Australia so what I've done with that is is I've gone ahead and I've fractured it with a few different um, settings let me just start off with um, the least okay 
and go over to explode so we can see. Now with this one, it's set at five, five pieces, 90 degrees, 20% uh, percent, uh, unevenness. So I did play around a little bit with the, with the last two values of, of, of fracture here, these last two. But um, this one's got five pieces, next one, oops, next one's got 10 pieces, and the next one there's got 20 pieces, and I'll show you the results of all these being calculated. Next thing I've got here is just a plank, and I've fractured that as well. As you can see, just a few pieces there, five pieces, 10, 30. Um, we have a sheet. Well, a sheet, I guess, yeah, like a tabletop. 10. Now you can see these aren't as pointy and, and um, like the more narrow pieces. 30. This one's got 50 pieces in it. Um, all these objects combined, there was a total of roughly 50 zero polygons. On average, two or three per object. Some objects had up to nine or ten, which is pretty good. Um, so what I did was with this pine stud, I created a pine frame. Now what you can do is, there's two things you can do. You can either build your frame and fracture it, and what you get is this. <clears throat> this is 10 pieces, 30, and 50. Or what you can do is, is you can um, get one of these fractured, already fractured uh, bits of uh, wood and create a frame from that. And I'll show you some results of that as well. And lastly, I created a fence and fractured that as well. Okay, and basically with this one, it it was the entire fence fractured as opposed to fracturing each individual piece and then bring it in together to create a frame. Um, and this one's with 50 pieces, so it's up to you how you want to um, set that up. So what I'll do now is I'll just show you some results, a video of the results of um, all these uh, uh, different pieces of wood um, with bullet. Okay, so just want to show you a bit of slow motion. I rendered this out with 50 frames per second. This is all the bits of wood together just um, smashing down. just to give you a different idea you can see the frames react differently to the amounts of fractures that are in them okay now I went ahead and created a bunch of different examples these are just the planks the sheets the different frames the fence and different ways of smashing stuff. Now, with this particular example, as you can see, as soon as the ball touches the frame, the whole frame collapses, and I guess that's where you use Chronosculpt um, to try to pin all these down. It would be really nice if that function was already in lightweight so that you could just pin them down and maybe you know, fade them off or on so that they, they move or don't move. That would be really nice. But um. The trick to this is to basically do what I've done in this next example, and that is to basically fracture certain parts, separate the layers, have one layer with all static, like the frame and all the rest of it, and select all the other bits and pieces and put them in another layer that you want to be um, to be calculated by bullet to, or to fracture and, and, and break apart, and that's what I've done here rather than pinning anything down or using chronoscope, I've just selected certain areas that I want to to break up. So I hope that's helped, I hope that's given you some idea of how to create some um, wood and more importantly how to set it up with bullets so that you get really good results. Believe me I did a lot, a lot, a lot of testing to get all these different parameters that I've um, shared with you. So I hope it's helped and I'll see you next time.